drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this video we'll be looking at the differences between the Bruzella 3.11 and Generation 4. This could be ideal for existing Bruzella Gen 3 owners or those considering if the price difference is worth it as the Bruzella 3.11 will continue to be sold alongside the new Gen 4. The jump in enhancements between Gen 3 to Gen 4 are the largest yet, so let's get started. Here is a side-by-side -side look at both the 35 and 65 litre models from both generations. As you can see the sizing is very similar from Gen 3 to Gen 4 and all units are of a similar height with the 65 litre models simply being wider. You will note that all four systems have taps but the Gen 4 taps are mounted lower down due to the way these have been redesigned. More on this later. The controller on the Generation 3 Brazilla is mounted down low on the system. You have the ability to pre-program six different MASH steps and you can also simply input the temperature you want on the fly. There is also a preheat timer so that you can have the system up to MASH in temperature for when you get started. This controller is not as advanced as some but it is also far more advanced than what is offered on many budget systems usually and has had various updates during its development within Generation 3. This controller has no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connectivity. With 3.11 each heating element can be controlled manually via its own physical power button, but this is not needed with the Gen 4 units as they control each element smartly. So let's now look at the Gen 4 controller. The new Gen 4 controllers are now smart with both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. Here is a look at some of the menu options offered on the controller while I explain further. Via the Gen 4 controller you have the ability to connect your brewing system to Kegland's own online platform known as Wrapped. In short this allows for data monitoring, Wrapped device pairing and acts as a hub for profile creation and more. You will note from the settings of the brewing system's Wrapped controller that there is a great deal on offer here from on-screen graphs to two-point temperature probe calibration and fine settings of the PID algorithm. What you see here is simply the start. Much more is planned for the future in various directions. There is also the ability to update the controller via Wi-Fi and add your own custom brewing profiles. Compatibility with Brewfather is also now ready, which is a huge plus. Here is a look at one of the parts of the future for Wrapped. It will not be long before you compare the forthcoming Wrapped Bluetooth digital temperature probes to the Gen 4 systems, which will allow multi-point temperature readings during mashing for greater accuracy, to mention just one use. This smart temp probe has a very long probe line allowing for a wide range of positions and is classed as a Bluetooth low energy device, or BLE for short. The Gen 4 Brazilas have total compatibility with such sensors via the RAP platform. By having a single or multiple BLO sensor added to the Brazilla, this will make it become a much smarter brewing solution and will be able to control your brew much more efficiently and effectively than seen before within a homebrew setting. With both Gen 4 models there are no longer manual buttons for each element, this is smartly handled by the controller, which also offers a great deal more into the bargain, including an optional PID algorithm mode to avoid temperature overshooting. The Gen 4 Brazilas offer the same rating of heating as the previous generation, which is 3.5 kW for the 65 litre model and 2.4 kW for the 35, but it should be understood that the Gen 4 elements have a larger surface area and like the Brazilla Gen 3 models are ultra low watt density. The key benefits here being that they will last a lot longer and eliminate the hot spots of older style elements that lead to burning on the bottom and a darkening of your wall. Due to this you will find that the cleaning of the bottom plate is also much easier and you will also be less likely to suffer a boil over. Another great plus is that the Gen 4 controllers are now mounted up high on the brewing system which is certainly easier than a controller mounted low. The viewing angle can also be adjusted to suit the user which is certainly very handy. This means the controller can be straight facing or tilted upwards which is certainly handy if brewing outside in the sun. The next area with some big changes is in regards to malt pipes. Firstly you can see that the Gen 4 35 litre malt pipe on the right here no longer has an overflow pipe in the middle. This is due to the fact that Keglan, like Grainfather with their G40 brewing system, feel that overflow is best handled by the malt pipe itself. Within this second video clip you can see the 65 litre malt pipe side by side too. 
so all Gen 4 malt pipes have extra perforations on their lower side to support this system, which not only works very well, but it also makes adding your grain at the start easier, as there is no pipe in the middle which frankly gets in the way when you are stirring in your malt. The Gen 4 malt pipes also now offer two stages of lifting, with feet now also in the middle of the malt pipe, not just at the bottom as seen on other home brewing systems. This ergonomic feature is also very useful for malt pipe positioning too, depending on the volume that you are brewing. More on this shortly. Unlike Grainfarvel with the latest G40 model, Kegland are offering a top mashing plate by standard with all Gen 4 Bruzilla units, just like they do with Gen 3. The Gen 4 top plates have a whole new design as you can see and the quality has also been enhanced. These top plates are optional though despite being standard with the brewing systems. As you have probably already noticed the Gen 4 malt pipes are of different dimensions compared to the Gen 3 versions. Here are the 65 litre malt pipes side by side for example. Shown on screen now is the important data starting with the 65 litre malt pipes with Gen 3 on the left and Gen 4 on the right. The top figure is the maximum amount of malt that will fit in the malt pipe and the lower figures are the efficient maximums offered by the malt pipes. So in the case of the 65 litre pipes you can see that the Gen 4 pipe allows efficient mashing of an extra 2.5 kilos of malt which is just over 5.5 pounds. Let us now look at the relevant data for the 35 litre malt pipes. Once again the top figures are the total grain that fits in the malt pipe and the bottom figures are the efficient maximums. So with the Gen 4 35 litre model you have an enhancement of 1 kilo or 2.2 pounds in Imperial of extra malt that can be efficiently mashed. Do keep in mind though that Kegland's boil extenders and extended malt pipes can push your brewing volume and malt capacity even further on both Gen 3 and Gen 4 too, and these upgrades are compatible with all generations of Bruzilla as well as Robobrew and Digiboil. Consult my previous video as shown on screen now for further details. This is not very easy to show on camera but here is the new concave bottom offered on all Gen 4 units. Within previous generations this has always been flat, but the Conway bottom offers some key advantages. Firstly you can totally drain a Gen 4 unit of watts simply by opening the bottom tap. Keglens did offer multiple handles on these systems anyway for those that may want them. This of course makes cleaning faster and easier too. This also means that it is possible to brew smaller batches compared to other previous generations of the Bruzilla. Both the 35 and 65 litre systems are now capable of brewing small 5 litre or 1.32 gallon batches, which is actually my chosen test batch size, and I have been using a sous vide setup for such brews in the past that I use to develop recipes. This is one of my favourite enhancements as you can imagine. Whilst mentioning the concave bottom and how it makes cleaning easier, I will also add that Kegland will soon be releasing this spray rotor that is suitable for use with all Bruzilla and Robobrew models. This spray rotor has been designed to suit low voltage pumps from 6 watts up to 25 watts. Not only is it useful for cleaning as a CIP solution, it can also be used for mashing as a wart spreader and also for sparging. This will be sold as an optional extra and uses the stainless steel nut and bulb from the brewing systems tap for easy connections to your recirculation hose. Kegland have also made some top glass lid changes to these systems as you can see here. These new handles are certainly larger and offer a more secure way of handling them for the user. Not that I have ever had an issue with the black smaller handles, but these new ones allow you to lock your fingers around them before moving. They are also far nicer looking and go along nicely with the other quality improvements of the system in general. Kegland still offers a false bottom by standard with the Bruzella Gen 4 in the same way that it does with the Gen 3, avoiding the need for a whirlpool and also issues with pumps getting stuck, plus the filtering of your hops and trub during transfer into your fermenter after a brew. The general quality of the Gen 4 false bottom has been enhanced compared to Gen 3 and you will now see there are two rings for lifting instead of just one. Another nice enhancement is the power cables for Gen 4 units are now removable compared to the wired in Gen 3 cables. This is handy for storage but also game changing if you should ever damage the power cable itself. Another big change that I hold great value to is how there is now open access to the pump and pipe work. Whereas the electronic parts that need to be covered are neatly covered but still accessible if you ever need them. This new setup makes customization very easy as well as those tasks that you usually dread like upgrading a pump.
This is actually the 35 litre version that you can see now, so let's now look at the 65. As you can see the layout is very much the same, but there is simply more space. I will also mention that my 65 litre is a pre-production model, so it is unlikely that your unit, if you buy one, will have as many screw holes as this one. You will note that the pump and pipework is connected to the centre drain here, which allows for total draining of the system via that low mounted tap that is fed here. Then branching off the T is the connection to the recirculation. Plenty of space is available to add more features in of course, especially in this 65 litre version. At the time of making this video, the Bruzella Gen 4 units are currently not available outside of Australia, and frankly even if you do live in Australia, units are hard to obtain due to demand, but this should ease given time. Brewers in Scandinavia and also further into Europe, plus those in USA, Canada and New Zealand, can expect Gen 4 to release between the summer and September at this point. Naturally this could be subject to change depending on all the usual factors that we have become used to in the last few years. So as you now know there is some time yet before the rest of the world will be able to buy one of these two new Bryn 4 brewing systems. My plan now is to start brewing on these like a madman, so that over the coming months I can give you the definitive truth about them. You can expect full overviews and comparisons with other brewing systems out there, and then some more. Do let me know in the comments section of this video what you would love to see, and you never know it could just happen. I read and reply to every comment, and many of my videos have been made due to viewer requests. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!